Hey guys, welcome to Black Belt Breakdown. This breakdown features Matty Holmes from Next Generation in Liverpool. The breakdown that we're going to do is actually two matches and they were from a tournament from the Tanko Submission Championships in 2017. The reason why we've done two is the first one is a super cool fight and the second is a really really good breakdown of the basics of leg lock defense and also attacks. They were from 2017 and the leg lock craze hadn't quite taken over yet so this will be a great breakdown for anyone that has been training for a while and wants to get into more leg locks but wants to go over the fundamentals of the positions. Enjoy. So you were a blue belt at the time right? Yeah, I was a blue belt. You'll notice of a lot of my matches, by the way, you'll watch me pacing up. I feel like, I sound like a bit of a weird, I feel like I'm marking me territory, like a wild animal sometimes. It sounds yeah. sad, but that's like something I like to do to get in the zone. Have you ever fought um, Thai? I've never fought Thai. I've done MMA twice, though. Okay, so it's, the, it's like the white crew, isn't it? Okay, so you'll notice here, whenever I'm there in a standing position, I always like to at least have my eyebrows on their level usually slightly lower to win the head position. Okay. I'll, um, so I'm looking for an arm to drag here. I think we split from here. You'll see just before I, um, like I, I go to like a body lock takedown and taking down, you'll see us exchange some words, a little bit of a giggle. He made a joke and said something, and I think I actually gave him a little peck on the cheek. It's hard to see on the angle as I took him down and arm barred him. Yeah. See the laugh? There. I just Space. saw yeah, okay, so this, is, just sorry. this is a good point to pause it actually, right? So I've got my hands together, my head's dropped lower than this, so I'm already getting on the inside. See, I'm starting to beat that elbow you can see of this. Uh -huh. I'm about to get chest to chest. A lot of people now would try and move the man about. What I need to do before anything is I need to close the gap between our hips. So I'm, you're going to see me, oh, if I do this good, I can't remember, I've not watched this for a while. I should connect my hips to his hips here to eat the space, and then turn him in a sharp circle. Okay. Should do. <laughs> it's been a while. No, there it is, yeah. There. Okay, pause it there. Oh. You'll notice from the body lock, I catch it like a wrist drive around the back of his back and strap the arm. Yeah, all right. So from the point I connect my hands together, you see me bring my hips to his hips, and I turn a sharp circle. Watch me catch the wrist drive as we hit the floor. There. Can you see that? Yeah, so one sec. Um... When you talk about the wrist ride, you're saying this part here, right? Yeah, I say wrist ride. I've actually got, I've got the V That's of his cool. arm, like the crook of his arm. So my right hand from the takedown I've hit is round the back of his back and I've caught like the crook of his arm there. It's going to make it very hard for him to build up to, up to his elbow. So, so I've got him very flat at very least here now. So what I usually like to do from here is stick my left knee in the hole, but from here I think I just go straight to grips. You'll see my left hand come round and it'll hook and I'll connect through the middle of his legs with my left hand and go two hands on, on his arm. So now I've connected my hands. So all I'm going to do now is, you paused at a great point by the way, I've got my hands together and I've, I can stack them towards that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up and stack them towards his head and rip. Um, by doing that, it's a strong standing up. Um, I'm going to have a lot of strength standing up with this. And as he goes through the air, he, he goes upside down, so it, it throws him out a little bit. And a lot of the time, they go to base a hand to the floor. And when they go to base a hand to the floor, it means the hands aren't together. So I can get extension of the arm to pull the arm out. And then I can get my arm by. I can't, I've not seen this for a while. But most of the time, when I lift them up, another arm goes to the mat to break their fall a little bit, just a natural instinct. And I use this as a way to separate their arms because their hands can't be together. You should see this now. That is a beautiful It's one. been a while since I watched this though. <laughs> see his hand? Yeah. So if you just drag that back, you'll see, because I lift him up and he's upside down, he looks for base with the ground with his hand. And by doing so, his hands are separated and now I can extend his arm. See? Yeah. There, see that hand on the arm? Mm -hmm. he's, he's inverted, he needs contact with the mat. He's, he's trying to break his fall as well. So his natural reaction is kicked in here. This isn't about you to now. This is, he's fallen towards the ground. His hands come across. Luckily for me, I've got two hands on his other arm. 
He's got nothing to support this arm I've got. You can see how close the arm I'm going to have a nice pull here. It's a really easy extension to get to this arm bar now. It's beautiful. This was the final against Ben Bennett. Yeah. And ben, Ben's a fairly well-known name on the UK circuit. Yeah, uh, so, so before, before this match... Um, Leg locks were starting to take off, but they hadn't completely take, uh, taken off. Um, ben Bennett had been winning a lot of super fights. He'd done super fights on Empire. and I'd seen a good few of his matches, and he, he was leg locking people left, right, centre, to be honest with you. Um, he's a very good practitioner. I've, I've also been against him since this, and he made good adjustments then. Um, the guy's a legit killer medals a lot. Um, I think he's just only a matter of time until he gets more opportunities and gets to show him what he can do. Yeah. Okay, so you'll see here right away. Watch where my I, I don't like to overextend too much. I like to keep my hips nice and far away. And you'll always notice at the very least, I'll always try to keep my eyebrow like head height, like in line with his eyebrows, preferably a little bit lower. We go towards the edge of the mat, but I don't really commit to it because I know we are near the edge of the mat. I want something nice and clean in the middle. So, what's your wrestling like? My wrestling, um, I've done submission wrestling for like six years. So every round I used to do was standing. So I've got like a better wrestling game than people think. You'll notice with my first engagements, whenever I'm fighting for head position, I, I preferably want like a bit of an angle on their head so I can manipulate their spine. But I always like to keep my eyebrows at least in line with their eyebrows, um, usually lower. So I've hit um, an arm drag there. I think it's a great way to, I, I like to sit through arm drag as well. I used to do that a lot, like the Marcelo style, if you know what I mean, where he'd sit down with it. Yeah, like ben, ben, yeah but Ben moves with me. So either way, um, I come here and right away, I've got exactly what I want. The plan with Bennett was to control the centre. We knew he was a good leg locker. Uh, if you could just pause that there. Is that all right? Yeah. So the plan was to, to hold the centre. I, I wanted to dominate the centre but also not overextend my body. So you'll notice the whole time, unless I've got solid grips on upper body, I don't try to force the upper body grips. I'm happy to sit in like um, this quarter knee slice. I don't know if that's the right name for it, but yeah, I know what I mean. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So I like to stay nice and low. So all my weight is back. It's distributed through my hip, into my hips and through my legs. Because if, if my head comes up and higher, or my head comes higher than it is, my legs become lighter, I'm easier to be elevated. So right away, I've, I've landed with the central position. I, I like to play this knee slice position a lot simply because it helps me dominate the centre. Uh, it's a great way to counter leg locks. It's also a great way to do your own leg locks. Okay, so there's a little bit of a feeling out here. Um, as you can see, I'm just looking for a couple of upper body grips. If you'll notice, I'm constantly keeping my weight back. See, I've got a little bit of a grip. I'm, I'm not happy with it. And I'm not willing to commit. I want to keep my weight on my hips. The, the main thing for now is make sure he doesn't get underneath me. Okay. I go for a little back attempt, and we reset, and I'm back to this knee slice position. You'll notice, if you just pause it a second, a really good defense to leg locks is um, controlling the center is one because it gives you the options to attack legs, plus it also, defensively, it's a pretty solid position to hold the centre. Also, if you can keep your knees close to your chest, it's really good defensively for heel hooks in general. Your legs are strong, your legs are stronger once it's nearly your chest. Um, and this doesn't always have to be, I have to bring the knee to the chest, I can bring the chest to the knee as well. So you'll notice I'll always be in this, why I'm in this like half position, you'll notice my chest will stay close to my knee or vice versa. Um, this is to stop and manipulate my legs, if you like. Um, you'll see people use this off the back as well. Some people will play like an open guard. Um, if your legs are quite extended, the weaker, and people can move them around and then enter their legs. If you keep your knees almost glued to your chest, you're going to see the amount you get hit with leg locks dramatically reduce. And that's uh, just for a defensive, um, a defensive matter, like a, a way to play defense. It's not all about like the actual like defense strategy. Part of that can be part of your strategy, as like um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you talk about controlling the center, 
I just want to clarify what you mean. Okay, so in between his legs, imagine like it, my leg is literally in between his legs. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? So, so my foot is in the middle. If I, if I was to like, imagine I'm standing over him. If he can have his feet inside my legs, uh, yeah. he's going to be able to go into a lot of these saddle entries, might be outside heel hook, um, these kind of attacks. So if I can hold the center, you're going to see um, uh, my opportunities for legs are going to be much higher and he's going to have less opportunities to go into my legs. Okay. Okay, so it's the inside space. Yeah, so see how I'm dominating the centre? You'll always more or less see in this match, my, my shin at least will always be in between his legs. You'll notice sometimes as well, if you just pause it there, I'm constantly wary as well about him reaching for my, in this procedure, it'd be my left leg here where we pause mm -hmm. this. If he can get his hands together under that left leg and like bring his chest towards it and possibly get under the leg there, yeah. So whenever I feel like he's going under, it's about keeping nice and low. I can keep nice and low, keep my weight in my hips still, so my hips are still heavy. And my head can act as a block, and you may well see that a few times as well. Just to block the path so we can't come under. I'm looking to tie that wrist off. Just, <laughs> I've still got that arm bar on the back of my head always. <laughs> okay, can you see how I'm forcing the knee slides all the time? I'm never over committing or rushing. See how I've got like uh, you've know, got a knee shield in front of me, and even when it goes out of the way, if I've not got up or proper upper body control, I'm not willing to rush to give. I'm happy to just sit in this nice position, sit with my leg in between his legs. That that originally what I was maybe thinking I could have a little scramble to his knee, but it kind of reset. Do you see it? I'm coming under this leg. So see how my chest is, comes nice. My chest will stay nice and low there. This, and I'll either block his head or put my head in front of. I can't remember what I do quite here. But see how heavy I am through his hand as well. See the space between my heel and my own ass? Yeah. Okay, so now I've got some sort of upper body control. So once I pass, it's all about keeping connection with his hip. Um, can you pause this here a sec? So now I've got him pretty flat. I need to keep connection with, it, with his right hip, whether it be whether it's my right hip to his right hip or my knee, you'll notice I'll monitor that space the whole time. The second I let him create space there and, and he can turn onto his right hip, he can bring his knees in and get some sort of regard active. Um, you'll see me go to step over his head a few times. I blame Daniel Strauss for this. I've seen, um, I've seen him at a submission on EBI. He did a little breakdown of it. and I tried it in the gym and I was catching everybody out with it. Um, so I just thought I'd try it a few times. What for? It was like a little, I think it was a little key lock. I can't even remember to, how to do it. I've got a rough idea how to go to it. The important thing I'm doing here, you'll notice how I absolutely smother his right hip. Whether it's my hip or the knee, I've got to be extra conscious of that. I can't afford to let him get an easy regard after passing. See that? So I drop, see how so I drop my hip? See how I'm following him? He's rotating, 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 and I just keep following him around. See how tight my hip is? Yeah, so you see the way I rotate my hip out there? It's either got to be the knee or the hip constantly in contact. He, he's scrambling just to buy space, and I'm just micromanaging it, adjust, adjust, follow him, follow him, eat the space. These are some things people miss out on sometimes as well, just fundamentals, man. Did you have a particular strategy for this? Then I always wanted to leg lock him, but um, if you just pause that there, sir. The plan was to leg lock him. Um, you, there's a moment where I enter into the legs and I end up on bottom position at one point. Um, I got a little, to be honest with you, a, a little, um, I didn't attack him confidently because he was the guy who was leg locking everybody at the time. I knew I had good leg locks. But this guy was pro proven leg locks in competition. This was my first opportunity to go leg lock someone in competition as well. So, like, this is the first time I got, like, let off the leash with heel hooks. Well, it was pretty cool. Um, you'll notice here where I've stopped, I play this position quite a bit. See how I'm in, like, a quarter mount? Mm -hmm. I like this because um, I don't get to do it in this match, but if I can switch my knee to the other side, 
I can do like a quarter mount, step back into the heel, hook what you've seen. Also, it pins his hips a lot. So he, he can't move too much. So I, I, I usually like to play these little in-between positions sometimes. I regular sometimes put my foot in there and put myself into these positions. And what you mean is knee slide across to that side. And yeah. then with the, your left leg back step. And enter so on his left leg. Back in this leg here. Yeah. Okay. So I don't actually get this going this way, but this is always like... And usually, even if they defend that hard, you can sometimes get the pass to that side as well and finish the knee slice. So I play this position quite a bit. I can also um, hold mount pretty good from here. Um, and I, like, I feel like it really limits their movement. Yeah, it's a great position. Oh. It gives the chair sit back take as well. Okay, can you, can you see how, I, even though I'm in like this back into this knee slice, my weight is nice and heavy on my knee. My right knee is still close to my chest. Okay, so if you just drag that back. Okay, so you're going to see a revert and um, you're going to see him invert now. I'm like invert a little bit and regard. You'll watch the first thing I do. I have to go back to fundamentals. I have to make sure he's not got an angle on me. The, the, the line of my shoulders is good or hips are square, and I posture up so I'm not broken down. Too many times do you see people regard, like invert to regard, and people just chase them, yeah? If you chase them, there's a chance they might get an angle on you. Maybe you're, the line of your shoulders break, you lose your shape. Maybe they get an angle off and your hips aren't square with theirs, and you're broke down. So as a rule of thumb, usually when people invert on me, you'll see me posture up right away, squared up. So as soon as he um, regards, lovely regard, by the way, You'll see me squared up and postured up right away. I'm not getting caught in no triangle or arm bar here. Yeah, there. There. Posture control. Okay. So, um, if you pause that there. There's a split second where I'm broke down. And then, basically, what I want to do is I don't want to be tied down like this. I want to be up, head up. I've got to micromanage these important fundamentals more than anything here. Um, so I need to make sure the line of my shoulders is straight. And that could mean even like slightly offset shoulders. People can force triangles and arm bars from there. The better the level guys are, the better they will be able to work off smaller offsets in your shoulders. So I like to keep my shoulders nice and square. I'll also, whenever the angle's off from me, because you'll know when if you ever play full guard, Angles are everything for a full guard player. So every time he angles off, you'll notice I just adjust. I follow and round my hips constantly square. And I make a solid attempt to keep my shoulders as straight as I can. Whenever I can, I fight posture. You'll see a few times I'll do my, I go into his armpits with my arms. Keep, whilst keep, I don't overstretch my arms and break the line of my shoulder. I'll keep the line of my shoulders straight the whole time. I've got to keep this shape or I'm going to run into problems. So you'll note, you'll see, there's a little part where we end up in guard. You'll see me making sure I've got square hips to him, square shoulders, and fighting for posture. Was he going see for a wrist lock there? What's that, sorry? Was he going for a wrist lock there? He go, he, I think he goes for one or two wrist locks in this. Um, he hasn't got any control of the elbow, though, so there's nothing to worry about. Quite flexible wrists. So the main thing I'm doing here is maintaining square hips, square shoulders. And every time I find myself drifting away and breaking the line of my shoulders, I just have to drag myself back. Right There, I went for like a little step over. Um, it's a way I can see you can break full guard and you can step over and like it cranks their hip a little bit. But I, did, I, I just didn't get it going. Sorry. There, yeah. So that was like a failed attempt. Um, but yeah. Okay, so he starts looking for arms. Let's just pause this a second. Right, you'll see he starts looking for arms, Rags. Um, the, the thing what the arms rag will do is it'll start to rotate my shoulder in. My head will start to turn, effectively breaking the line of my shoulders and starts to break my posture. So something I like to do here is when someone goes on an arm drag, I'll say that he's going on my right arm there, you'll notice my left arm will go to the opposite um, armpit. That simply it creates tension across my chest and shoulders, and they can't cross each other. So now this right shoulder can't lead and take my head forward, but the left, the left side, the left hand 
will block and my shoulders can't cross. So it makes them harder to break, um, break my shape, if you'll see. Okay. You see? Um, you'll yeah. see, you might see that a few times. I'll always go. So if his arms are like me, starts to pull this in, you'll see me go to the opposite side. I think you'll see that a few times. So what I'm looking for here is just to shut him down. I know at some point there's another wrist lock attempt, but he hasn't got the elbow, so I'm just going to make sure I'm ready to posture. Um, I'm waiting effectively for him to open his guard. The second he opens his guard, I'm going to pop him up and split his legs, and he doesn't time his guard back up. I don't want to waste any more time here, and I know at some point he has to open up. Okay. This was one of his weaker hip, attempt, uh, hip bump attempts. So if he hip bumps me... Um, He's got a chance of off-balancing. Maybe I have to base on the ground with my hand. And then that gives him the opportunity to like um, go tra hit bump triangle and all these options. So he's set. I drop back down. And I'm just maintaining saying square. I want to get my posture back now. So I reach, but I reach with both hands there. And even when I reach with one, I make sure the left shoulder doesn't go too far forward than the right. There. Okay. See there? Just drag that back. Yeah. Um, so, so. You see the hip bump there? Watch what I activate. Look how I activate my hips to counter his hip bump attempt. I smash back into it. Yeah. See? Yeah. So as his hips were going um, across you were just sending, so as his hips were going that way, you drove your hips into his. Yeah. So I met, I met them with force, basically, yeah. And now from this point on, you'll actually see at the back, his legs have opened, and I'm aware of this now. I can see he's overcommitted. I've got a hand on the hip. He's, he's split. I've opened his legs now. So ultimately, I need to bring my knee up. I seem to think I do bring my knee up. I need to watch this. Actually, but I should bring the knee up right away now. Yeah. That's See the knee come up? Here. Right. Here's my first mistake. I don't want to say my first mistake. Not in the match, but here's a mistake here. So, as you can see now, as he's, he is on his left hip, so his right leg is shelved on my leg. You're going to see me step up now. I should have maintained that knee and pulled it tighter to my hip. But you'll see it's a little bit loose. I tried to maintain the knee a little bit too late. I should have maintained the knee here. But you'll see now as you play it a little bit, I'm just a little bit shallow and I tried to come back after it. See here? Yeah. I think I do come back for the knee, but I've left it a little bit too late. Yeah. Here, there. I've not got a great bite. Uh, I, I attempt, but you'll see now. It does a good job, actually, here. Yeah. Yeah, you, your hips are like miles away. Yeah, yeah. See, see the see the see the gap between see the gap between my ass and his ass. That's yeah. too big, and his knee is shallow. It should have been shelved. Like, see where his foot is. I should have had his like knee shelved there. So I've made a mistake there. To be fair, you'll see. I think Bennett does a nice little bit of defensive work at first. When I first think I'm going to reap, I think he he puts like he blocks it a little bit. I think he like puts his right hand across for a split second until he squares up with me. Okay, see how his arm's blocking me? See how his elbow is near his own knee? That kind of blocks me coming over the top of the reap. And if you just drag that back. He does a nice little back step here and I go for an I go for an arm drag. See, I fight for the centre. See, I'm fighting for the centre. Yeah. Keep my finger between it. I go for an arm drag, and we scramble, and I end up on the bottom. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm on bottom position. It's fine, because although I am in bottom position, the only thing he has is contact with my hip. He has hip-to-hip -hip contact with my hip. He has no upper body control. And so what I do now is rather than gripping onto him and trying to squeeze him and pull him on top of me, what you see a lot of guys coming up do as well, Sometimes it's better to just have a frame in between it. In this case, I go for a low frame. I, I, I put my hands near my hips. Um, I don't overextend my arms because I don't want him to win an underhook and get proper top, um, upper body control. You'll see me, as soon as he takes side control, I don't like to feel where he is. So you'll see me shake a little bit to make sure I've got my hands in good position. 
because I, I basically want to load them up because I'm, I'm getting ready to explode. <laughs> right, so you'll see he's a little bit low, so I just shake him a little bit. See how I just bring him a little bit higher? My hands are down the whole time, and I'm not willing to open my elbows. Um, I don't want to give him upper body control. So I'm just circling round to his hip and stop there. I was shallow. I'm already using that to push. My arm hasn't pushed through the whole way. But so I just push it through shallow and I just gradually come lower down his back to give him less chance of an overhook. That's really interesting. So um, what you're saying is rather than you're happy with the wrist being there rather than the elbow. Yeah. Really interesting, and that I I, 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 I I like to go really shallow with it. But basically, so I've he he's yeah. the position he is in now. He's okay. kind of he's committed. He hasn't got so as you've seen before. I shook him as you've seen where I shook him up, and I just got him a little bit higher on my body. But I knew he didn't have upper upper body control, my body because he didn't have proper grips. So I I knew I had good space. Can you already see where my hips are? Can you see how clear they are to explode? So now I just go for a shallow underhook. And I try, I, try, I try to my best to keep it as shallow as I can so he can't really get any overhook to drive back. Do you get, do you get what I mean? Yeah, that's really interesting because I, I look to come up onto the single. When yeah, I yeah. this escape, I come up onto the single leg. Um, or then I can work my way back into half guard. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so using that, as a strategy is yeah and, and by that sh that's that's all i need so that's nice and shallow but i can like use that to help me turn in and right so now i've turned in i'm nice and low on his back so now his hips are higher than mine his head is past mine so he's very light now um he hasn't got any real control of my body but i've got the in i'm in between his legs now can you see how my shin is in between his legs yeah, there. And um, he's, well, not effective. He's got nothing between you and his legs. Yeah, so he's, he would find, he, there's, no, there's no chance of him really digging back with his left hand and getting an underhook. His only option really is to scramble out. He can like base on the mat, but either way, I'm under. So he's got a scrambling chance now. But I, as you can see, I'm already in a great position. I've got the centre. I'm low near his hip, and you're going to see me enter into his legs here. Okay, so now I've, I've entered into his legs on an outside heel hook. Um, what you'll see now is outside heel hooks work better when the legs extend, by the way, as opposed to an inside. Inside heel hooks work better when the leg is, like, bent. And outside heel hooks, they tend to work better with an extended leg, so when the leg's pretty straight. So his best defense now would the most be been to keep the bend in his leg. So I need to try to straighten him out. So I need to try to straighten his leg out as best as I can. But also you'll see my left leg. I'm going to pull. Once I dig for the heel, I'm going to pull. I don't want to pull the, the heel across me completely, but I force the rotation. I just want to pull the tension. I want to be able to hit through. At the same time, my left leg needs to act as a wedge and, and like a counter to my hip, so you'll see like my left shin will come as like a wedge and try block, so you've got opposing forces for his leg. See there? That left leg is driving down as hard as I can. I've got tension. I'm wrapped around his heel, I'm pulling him tension, and a little hip in there is gonna finish his heel up. If that left leg there is loose, yeah, it'll make rotation easier for him. Okay, so you're essentially doing a, a leg extension inside yeah. his groin? Yeah, so this left leg is driving down. That's like, so that is, my left leg is driving down to the mat. So although I'm pulling across my body a little bit, yeah, and I, I'm going to hip through, I need tension with this top leg, and that's going to reduce the rotation because rotation gives him a chance to take uh, the pressure off his knee ligaments. And a little hip in, obviously, because all here looks about hip in it. And there you are. Yeah. I'm pretty pumped by now, and then. Should be, mate. They were incredible matches.
Absolutely incredible. 